This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The law is, is, is holy. What, what came in, in those books of Moses, the law is holy. It is perfect. It is from God. Well, somebody says, what's the problem in, with it? it? It was too perfect for fallen people. It was too perfect for imperfect people. World Changers Church International and Creflo Dollar Ministries are committed to changing lives all over the world. Your generous gifts are helping us to do just that. For your added convenience, we want to invite you to join Change Express, our automatic giving service. You can give monthly and change lives by having your love gift deducted from your checking account or credit card on the same day every month. To sign up, log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org right now. Whatever God says to us is through the person of Jesus Christ. All right, I got to show you a scripture. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 and verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Are you with me? Uh, I know the couch is comfortable. I know you might have just finished eating your waffles. Stay here, stay here, stay here, stay here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 6. Uh, he says, for God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined where? In our hearts. Why? To give the light of the knowledge, watch this, of the glory of God. And, and how's he going to give us the light of the knowledge, the knowledge of the glory of God? He says, I'm going to do it in the face of Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you the knowledge through, in the face of, through the face of Jesus Christ, according to the Scripture. Look at what he says now. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In the face of Jesus Christ. So God now speaks to the new creation in Christ Jesus in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, what does that mean? God doesn't speak anymore to his children in the face of Moses. He doesn't speak anymore to his children through the face of, uh, uh, in the face of David. He doesn't speak anymore to his children uh, in the face of Elijah. In this New Testament, God only speaks to believers in Christ in the face and in the person of of Jesus Christ. God talks to believers now as though he is talking to Jesus Christ. God is talking to believers as though he is talking to Jesus Christ. Woo -hoo. All right, now watch this. What is that? Why? Why does God talk to believers as though he is speaking to Jesus Christ? Show me the scripture, Pastor. You said you was going to show me everything. Look at Acts chapter 17. And verse 28, Acts 17 and 28, watch carefully. For in Jesus we live. Oh, so if he's going to speak to me and I live in Jesus, he got to speak to Jesus. In Jesus we live and we what? Move and we what? We have our being as certain also of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So for God to talk to us, Therefore, it has to be through the one we live in. If God's going to talk to us, he's going to talk through the one that we live in. Those of you who are born again, you are in Christ, you live in Christ, and so God's going to talk to us in the face of Jesus Christ. That's the one we live in, and, and, and praise God because of that. It's his, you, you got to understand that once you are born again, it, it's no longer about you. It's, it's in him we live. It's in him we move. It's in him we have our being. And if we believe that we're in him, then God's going to speak uh, to us in the face of Jesus, and, and we get the message because we are in him. Oh, my goodness. Look at Hebrews 9. Look at Hebrews 9. Uh, and when you get to Hebrews 9, uh, let me see something here. Hebrews 9, 24. Let's see here. Hebrews 9 
and verse 24. Listen here. He says, for Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but he's entered into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. So he is our uh, advocate. He appears in the presence of God for us. We live in him. He speaks to him, and we get the message. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's that stuff that's going on with you at the red light, and all of a sudden, this thing pops in your brain, and you're like, where did that come from? And you know you're not smart enough to do that. You're not smart enough to get that. It's that thing that when you're just sitting around at home and this wisdom just shows up in the face of Jesus Christ and, you, and, this, and this, this, this still small voice because you live in him and he's in this presence and, and he speaks to you. This is what the scripture says and, and we need more revelation of who we are and, and our identity in Christ Jesus. So living primarily by the law and the prophets, which is the Old Testament, ended with John the Baptist. Living primarily by the law and the prophets, which is the Old Testament, ended with John the Baptist. Let me re re let's, let's re re review it one more time. Matthew chapter 11, 13. Matthew chapter 11, 13. Look what he says. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And then in Luke 16, 16, look at it. The law and the prophets were until John. So both the law, which is the book of Moses, and the prophets, everything under the Old Testament, Jesus used past, listen, look at both of those scriptures. He used past tense. He used words like were and prophesize until John. Look, at, look, at, look again at Matthew eleven thirteen. 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesized, past tense. And then Luke 16, 16. For the law and the prophets were un until, were, 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 past tense, until, were, were. Not, not, if it was still in operation, though he wouldn't have referred to it in past tense. All right? So the children of God no longer live by or under the law or the prophets anymore. I hope I made myself clear. We are the children of God. We are in Christ Jesus. We, are, we don't live under the law of uh, you know, the, the law or the prophets. Now, in fact, let's go. Let's look at this. I got to show it to you. Romans 3, verse 19. Romans 3 and, and verse 19. Now, this is, this is, this is the first part of, of I'm, I'm trying to pick out the easiest, most foundational thing I can teach before I get deeper in this. My greatest temptation today is I, I want to go deeper in, 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 a, in, a, in a plethora of ways but I need to stick with the basics until you can get a hold of what, of what I'm trying to show you. <clears throat> um, verse 19, Romans 3, verse 19. Look what he says in verse 19. Now, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. All right? So he says whatever the law says, it says to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Now, now look at what he says. Now, we, we know that it, what, what, what things soever the law says, it's, it's talking to who? The law's talking to those who are, who are under the law. Uh, from what I've studied, Jewish people are the ones who are under the law. Exodus identifies God giving the law to Jewish people and Jewish people getting the invitation to that. Or somebody said, well, what about us? Well, look at uh, Romans chapter 6, 14. So the books of Moses are only for those who are living under the law. The books of Moses are only for those who are living under the law. And if you'll notice, a lot of Jewish people still are very engaged in those books. But now, what about us? Look at uh, Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. Pay attention to what he says here. Verse 14 says... Um, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law. You are not under the law. You are not under the books of the law. You're not under Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. You're not under that. You don't govern yourself with that or under that. You are not under the law. You are not under the law, okay? No born-again believer in Christ Jesus 
is under the law in any way. You, are, you don't do that. And, and when I say law, now you know what I'm talking about. Those four books, you're not under the law. So somebody says, and I can hear this loud and clear, and, and, and I don't want to be rude or mean, but I'm going to address it the way it needs to be addressed. At this particular point over the years of me teaching this, somebody always asks a question like this. So does this mean I can do what I please and do it the way I, I, I want to do it? Since I'm not under the law, so can I just live like I want to live and do what I want to do and just hop around from bed to bed and, and just do all kinds of crazy? Can I just kind of do what I want to do? The first thing I've come to recognize is that question only comes from baby Christians. That question, a mature Christian, that ain't even going through his head. But baby Christians are the ones that are always asking, well, does that mean I can go and freaking dig me poking them and, 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 and chiquiting them? We can just go at... No, no, I'm going to just answer the question. No, 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 no. Baby Christians think like that. But, the, you know, the Bible says something different. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 15. The answer to that question is no, because there's a lot more to this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15. Now, now, now I, I want you to first of all realize when you ask that question, well, can I just go on and live like, you know, whatever, how I want to live, how whatever pleases me? You know what you're doing? You're making a decision to live your life to please you instead of living your life to please God. And being a born-again Christian is all about a decision to live your life to please God. And so by asking that question, that means you've not, you've not settled the issue that I got born again so I can live my life to please God. You're still trying to figure out, now that you're saved, how you can live your life to please you. And that's where a lot of the problems are coming in. Look at what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15. He says, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Look at that. He died so that you don't live unto yourself, but unto him which died for them and rose again. He just told you what to do. You're living unto Jesus who died and rose again. You are living not unto yourself. Man, isn't that the issue in the body of Christ right now? So many people trying to figure out how to live unto themselves. And that's why, you know, you know they're, they're looking for validation and they're looking to try to please everybody but God. And then, you know, in this day and time, you know, they're so smart, you can't tell them nothing, you know. And, and I'm telling you, that's not what the Scripture says. I'm giving it to you in the Word. He didn't die so you can live unto yourself. So all the things you got planned, and here's what we do as Christians. Well, now that I'm a Christian, let me pray and ask God to do something that pleases me. And all of our prayers about God do something that pleases me. And, well, I'm going to give because maybe I can get something that pleases me. And, well, I'm going to go to church and, and maybe, you know, God will, you know, do something that pleases me. And he says, I didn't die so that you could live a life pleasing unto yourself. I died so you can live a life that's pleasing unto me. Well, Brother Dollar, are you telling us to just, just throw away the Old Testament and, and throw away the law? Well, no, the, the Bible makes it clear. He says those things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, I believe, Romans 15, 4, were written for our learning so that we through them might have hope, might have hope. So the Old Testament, we can still, it, we can still learn from it, but we don't live by it anymore, okay? And, and let me show you something else about the law. Look at Romans chapter 3 you know, putting it in proper perspective because people just want to just, ah, well, let's just throw it away then. And let's just go live a life of sin because we're under grace. Well, now you know from what I taught you last week, that ain't so. Grace is not an excuse for sin. Grace is a way out of sin. Uh, grace is not a license to sin. Grace is a, a way out of doing stuff that you've been trying to get right all your life. Look at this. This is important. Romans 3.31 says, do we then make void the law through faith? And here's what he said, God forbid. God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. What does that word mean? It means we esteem it. It means we reverence it. 
what, is, what are you talking about? Esteem the law, reverence the law. See, if it were not for the law, we would have never, we would have never been able to see our need for Jesus. And so we esteem the law because it played its part in getting us in a position where we, where we could say, I need a savior. If it, were not, if, if it were not for the law, the law revealing our sins, the law revealing our weaknesses, the law, you know, revealing that we can't do this by ourselves and the law revealing our failure. If it were not for the law, it would have never pointed us and positioned us in a place of knowing I need help. I need Jesus. So he says, no, don't throw it away. Esteem it. No, don't, don't throw it away. Reverence it. Let's be appreciative of it because without it, we wouldn't be where we, where we are today. And, and don't forget now, the, the law is, is, is holy. What, what came in, in those books of Moses, the law is holy. It is perfect. It is from God. Well, somebody says, what's the problem in it, with it? it? It was too perfect for fallen people. It was too perfect for imperfect people. And uh, the only person that could keep all of the law was Jesus. Remember, Jesus came and he said in Matthew 5, he says, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. I came to do it. Not one jot or tittle of the law will pass away until it be fulfilled. And somebody says, well, why? Because he was the only one that could. You know, people going around talking about, you're, you're trying to destroy the law and tell people not to live by the law and stuff like that. And Jesus said he didn't come to destroy the law. I ain't trying to destroy the law. I'm just trying to show you, you ain't supposed to be living by, by th that set, that standard anymore. Jesus has a better standard with better promises. And you still over here trying to live by something that wasn't extended to you in the first place. Amen. Praise God. Man, I feel like shouting. Glory be to God. Now, this means, and, 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 and let me, let me I, I haven't spent the time to break down Romans 3.31, so I, I wrote something here so you can really get a hold of what this means. This means that as Christians, we live our life in righteousness and in holiness, not by observing or trying to keep the law, so that way we are not living in the fear of failing to keep the law in any way. So basically, you're not under the law, and, and we don't live our lives in righteousness and in holiness uh, by trying to keep the law, and then by doing that, then there's no fear of not being able to keep the law. So as we live and walk on by faith, being led by the Spirit of God, we have no fear of the punishment and the curse that follows not keeping or breaking the law hanging over our head. Jesus set us free from the penalty of not being able to keep the law. And so under the new covenant, somebody says, well, if you ain't got the law of Moses, well, bless God, we just don't have no morals. <laughs> that dumb thing. Yeah we, yeah, we do. We have something better than morals. We have the king of morals. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace that will teach you to deny unrighteousness, that will teach you how to live holiness. See, the grace of God is not the message that tells everybody they can just go sin like crazy. The grace of God is still headed towards holiness. The grace of God fully intends on bringing us down the path of holiness and righteousness and morality. See, we've, people have tried to accomplish morality under the law. They tried to accomplish morality by trying to keep and to do what the law said. And they kept falling back and kept messing up and kept dying because they broke it. A lot of people died under the law. But God, through his mercy, said, you know what? I'm going to give you a new agreement. And uh, if you believe in Jesus Christ, my son, I'm going to give you him to live in, and I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit to guide you and to... And he's going to change you from the inside out. He's going to literally give you new desires to do what pleases God. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You have the desire to please God. You don't, you're like, where did this come from? And the things you used to do, the desire for it's gone. In some cases, in a day or two, some of you immediately, it, it, the desire's been snatched out of you. Ain't no way that can happen by the Holy Spirit. That, that didn't happen under the law. It was a constant effort and sweat to try to do something, and then when you couldn't do it, you, you got condemned. That's, that's not 
what this is. Jesus has come, and we can now live a life of righteousness and holiness as we're led by the Spirit of God. And as the Spirit of God begins to work on inside of us, giving us a desire to do what pleases him. And that's where we are. And that's where we are, praise God. Now look at Romans chapter 3, 21. Notice this again. I just want to just get this in your thinking. Romans 3, 21 says, but now the righteousness of God without the law. So now he's talking about righteousness without the law, which, you know, you can very well go ahead and assume that there was a time righteousness that came from the law, which was self-righteousness or or righteousness that was obtained through your own efforts to try to get it. But here he says, verse 21, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. So today, we are living under righteousness that's not ours. We're living under the righteousness of God without the law, being witnessed by the law and the prophets of, or by the Old Testament. So here under the Old Testament, the Old Testament required that you had to meet uh, you have to meet the requirements of the Old Testament in order to become righteous. So if the Old Testament says you got to do these five things, then you got to meet those, meet those qualifications, fulfill those five things in order to be called righteous. Now, if you didn't, if you didn't meet all five of them, you, wouldn't, you would not be declared righteous. So you were righteous by your obedience to be able to accomplish something. But we're not under that. That ended with, with uh, John the Baptist. We are under this New Testament that says there are no requirements where righteousness is concerned except to believe and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. So how, how, do I, how do I accomplish righteousness today outside of the Old Testament? I believe in Jesus, and that is enough for me to be made righteous. Uh, this is so interesting, but in the book of Genesis, um, Abraham believed God, and heaven said, you're righteous. He did it. He did it. There was, there, was no, there was no law at that time. Abraham believed God, and heaven said, you're righteous. Well, how did he get righteous? He believed God. The same thing with us, praise God. We believe God. Now, I want to I get into something, because I hear some of you saying, well, I just can't receive what you're saying. Yeah, you wouldn't believe the number of preachers I've, I've tried to talk to about. Well, I just don't know about that. You're right. That's why I'm teaching it, because you don't know about it. And then you don't sit there long enough to get it so you can stop doing what you're doing. Oh, anyway, let me calm down. So let me, let me become, you know, let me get on your side and just show you it still ain't going to work. Look at um, Isaiah 64 and verse 6. All right, Isaiah 64, verse 6. Let's basically do what's being done with scriptures, and then I'll just, I'll just show you what the, what the problem is with this. Isaiah 64... So let's, let's take righteousness, for example, and use this scripture in the Old Testament to try to talk, talk about it, and I'll show you what's wrong with it. Isaiah 64, verse 6, he says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness as, as a filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. That ain't for you who are born again. But now there's some preacher who will take Isaiah 64 and preach a whole sermon on that. And you will walk out of church and you'll go out and say, oh, we just a bunch of unclean things. And then somebody around you say, oh, yes, amen, just as unclean and nasty as you want to be. He said, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Well, that ain't, that ain't talking about you. Somebody says, well, how come it ain't talking about me? It's in the Bible. No, it's in the Old Testament that ended with John the Baptist, and you're still trying to live by verse 6. So now what's the problem with verse 6? This verse is not talking to you if you are saved. Why? Because today, your righteousness, as, if your righteousness today was as a filthy rag, then God's righteousness would have to be, have to be as a filthy rag. Why would you say that? Because your righteousness that you got for being born again is not your righteousness. It's Jesus. Jesus made you righteous. You believed it, and so you got his righteousness. So to say today that your righteousness is just a bunch of filthy rags, Jesus' righteousness would have to be a filthy rag <laughs> because whatever you got, you got it from him. So if you say today, 
Well, brother, my righteousness is as filthy rag. You're saying so is Jesus' righteousness. See, you got to understand, as long as Jesus is okay, you okay. It, even in the Old, Cus in, in Old Covenant, when they, when they brought the uh, sacrificial offerings, as long as the sacrifice was okay, then you were okay who brought the sacrifice. But if the sacrifice wasn't okay, you ain't okay. Well, Jesus is our sacrifice. And as long as Jesus is righteous, you righteous. Did you know that the things that were true before Jesus came aren't necessarily true now? If we don't know this, we can be confused by false religious doctrines. In his series, The Cross, The Defining Line of the Gospel, Creflo Dollar walks us through how the cross changed everything. The books of Moses are only for those who are living under the law. But now, what about us? We have the king of morals. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace, that will teach you to deny unrighteousness, that will teach you how to live holiness. See, the grace of God is still headed towards holiness. All four messages of this invaluable series can be yours today for a love gift of $25 or more. Don't miss out. Call the number on your screen or visit creflodollarministries.org to get yours today. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. Don't miss a service and catch up on the latest messages from Creflo and Taffy Dollar like No More Worries, Overcoming Uncertainty, and countless other life-changing series streaming on the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Holy Spirit's not sitting, sitting around reminding you of what you did in the past. That's condemnation. He's not going to do that. If any man is in Christ, he is a new species of being. You know why? Because of the image of Christ. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store, search Creflo Dollar Ministries, and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Do you have a burning desire to see lives changed by the gospel of grace? If so, prayerfully consider supporting Creflo Dollar Ministries financially. You may not be called to preach in a pulpit or perform missions work in another country, but you assist those who are called to do these things each time you give financial gifts to this ministry. God bless you, and I'll see you next time right here on Changing Your World. To support our kingdom mission of winning souls for Jesus, you may call us or give online at creflodollarministries.org. Thank you for giving and enabling us to share this gospel of grace all over the world. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.